dear friends, uh, it is my pleasure um, to be giving a talk in um, IFNE's uh, um, workshop on neuroendoscopy. Um, it's been really a pleasure working with IFNE all this time. Um, this talk is a talk that myself and Yoakam came up with, um, and um, uh, so both of us are involved in this talk. I have no disclosures. Um, gold standard for surgical treatment of lumbar disc herniation has been open microdiscectomy. A minimally invasive endoscopic discectomy, dilating the paraspinal muscles and using tubular retractors using an endoscope is thought that dilating the muscles rather than stripping the muscles decreases surgical morbidity. Full endoscopic interlaminar lumbar discectomy, is it the gold standard yet? That's the question we asked uh, in 2014. I'm still asking the same question here. Why MIS? It's the basic tenant of surgery is to effectively treat pathology with minimal uh, disturbance of normal anatomy. That is leaving the smallest footprint. Micro uh, endoscopic discectomy first developed in 97. It's a muscle splitting approach with serial tubular dilators and tubular retractor and special endoscope used to perform discectomy. Many people use microscope for a similar procedure. We know that Mixter and Barr first described uh, uh, the discectomy way back in 1934. Mm -hmm. And Metrix tubular dilator system with endoscope came in in 1999. And Smith and Foley introduced the MED system in 97. So this is what we're talking about, that slowly and gradually this has moved into a minimally invasive era. Uh, why MIS? It's reduced post-operative pain, tiny scars, short circuit recovery time, and um, shorter hospital stay. Endoscopic techniques improved elimination, better focus on the spot, you're right there, superior circumferential view by application of angled optics, and it's a less invasive approach. How do we know about the impact of uh, muscle retraction? This study way back in 1998 uh, by Kawaguchi, what they did was they divided uh, uh, the rats into three groups in which the retractor was applied for two hours, and uh, continuous and a five minute retraction release after one hour and a five minute retraction release after every 40 minutes of retraction. Um, what they found was that a histological chemical examination at 48 hours, one week and six weeks and CPKMM measurements were looked at 48 hours. And they showed that CPKMM was highest in group one, which there was continuous retraction and regenerated muscle fibers, the smallest fibers, uh, were in group one as well. Uh, Taylor looked at this in 20 patients with intramuscular pressure, 5, 30, 60 minutes into surgery, and they took muscle biopsies and found increase in IMP during retraction. And so showing that there is decreased ATP. So there's a theoretical advantage, minimal muscle trauma, maybe decreased scarring, mini open, and uh, high magnification. Significant patient demand, superior aesthetic results, less post-operative pain. And you can do this for various kinds of approaches as shown here for a straightforward um, discectomy, for stenosis, for a far lateral disc, and a disc out um, of the um, forum. So decompression of operation, outpatient procedures, interest of patients and surgeons alike. So it's an, it emerged as a minimally invasive alternative to conventional um, microsurgical approach. Interlaminar endoscopy claims smooth transition from microscopic surgery to microendoscopic surgery, decreasing the learning curve. So uh, this is a study from 2013, 366 patients. Microendoscopy provide wide visualization through oblique lens, bilateral decompression via unilateral approach going on over the top. Two year follow up with 310 patients. Uh, the results of these studies showed that 35% uh, were excellent, 35% were good, fair was 22%, and poor was 8%. Uh, 20 surgery-related complications were identified with uh, dural tear, wrong level operation. All patients recovered with no serious post-operative complication, and they found this to be safe and effective. Lateral stenosis, stenosis the interlaminar endoscopic versus microscopic, 160 patients and uh, visual analog scale and various questionnaires were applied and 75% of the patients had no leg pain and 20 have occasional pain. Uh, clinical results were same in both groups 
And so they concluded that uh, interlaminar endoscopic approach was equivalent to the microsurgical technique. Advantage was of the reduced trauma. Uh, another study uh, by Rutan uh, showed that uh, this was actually a prospective randomized controlled trial with 178 patients, that 82% of the patients no longer had leg pain and 14% had occasional pain. The recurrence rate was 6%. The endoscopic technique provides significant advantage in back pain rehabilitation, complication, and uh, traumatization. Clinical results of all techniques are equal to that of microsurgical approach with an advantage of reduced trauma. Uh, so this is another study with minimally invasive compared to microsurgical approach. And um, so it's easy go technique, um, positioning with decompression of abdomen and thorax, skin incision, interdaminar fenestration, localization of dura and nerve root, sequestrimi, uh, root decompression, and evacuation of spinal disc segment if necessary. So basic principles is that we have an incision, which is um, two centimeter paramedian, 1.5 to 2.5 centimeter long. And it's um, uh, what we do is we have to target uh, um, uh, right at the, on the inferior edge of the lamina. We need to open up the fascia to ensure that there are no problems. Otherwise you could have a clot and you may require reinsertion um, of the um, tubular retractors again. Positioning of the trajectory of the trocar has to be really perpendicular to the lamina and trajectories towards the disc. If the disc is higher up, you direct it upwards. If the disc is lower down, you direct it downwards. Positioning on trajectory of uh, trocar is important because you, know, you can have perforation in the lamina, interlaminar view, and dual sac. Tip of the trocar not close enough to the lamina. Final tubular replacement is something like this. And this is when you have done a laminotomy. Uh, the advantages have been discussed before. Uh, there are limitations. There's a learning curve to using the system. Complications like dual tear may occur, which are difficult to repair, and delicate instrumentation with risk of instrument failure. So this is a study looking at uh, 138 patients and see checking their learning curve. It's showing pretty good results um, comparing MEG versus conventional and uh, leaving symptoms were 70% uh, with microscopic and 90% with uh, endoscopic approach. No revision surgery was necessary. Another study showing the same thing with excellent results. Um, and basically we, what they showed was you need adequate expertise, a precise selection of initial cases, a proper surgical planning and a careful technique. So if you compare another comparison with microendoscopic versus open, uh, done in 2007, randomized controlled trial with 40 patients. So uh, they were both were equal. Um, the only difference was that the aesthetic uh, results were better and patients required less analgesia. So decompression can be on one side onto the, or onto the opposite side as well as. Uh, so how about an inter, intralaminar approach? So that is possible. And these are the pictures taken by Joachim. Um, and so the same principle applies, but through a very small um, uh, perforator. Um, orange trocar, a very small opening, and this can give you excellent results without scar formation with superb outcome. Interlaminar approach, you can see how it's, it's taken. So this is the opening in the lamina through which the, the uh, sequester is taken out. So endoscopic spine surgery, application possible in wide range of indications in degenerative spine disease, mainly lumbar. Yeah, it has been used in cervical and it's shown to have very good results in that. Evidence that complication rate is no higher than with microscopy. Um, reduce muscle trauma by use of sheath system. Smaller the work sheath, the smaller the trauma, the softer the da damage, the higher the necessity of application of an endoscope. Superior aesthetic results are evidence is there. Some out, same outcome with less muscular trauma and superior cosmetic results. Endoscopy will play a significant role in the treatment of degenerated spine disease in future. This is what we know already. Thank you and it's a pleasure talking to you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah.